If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Four years ago, I stood before a magistrate in a courtroom, not dissimilar to this one, but I wasn't there as a speaker. I was there as a defendant, and I was sentenced to two years and three months in prison. So you can see it's difficult for me to ignore the irony of this situation. <laughs> Have you ever wished that you could turn back time? Have you ever felt guilt and shame for a bad mistake that you'd made? I was convicted of committing $63,000 worth of fraud. But I was lucky. I was given a second chance. Many aren't. Prior to my release from prison, I had no idea of what my reintegration back into society would look like. I thought it would be difficult, and you all probably think the same. I'm here to tell you it was 100 times more difficult than I ever could have imagined. But if you don't have an appreciation of that, how can you possibly help someone needing that break, needing that second chance? If I can help you appreciate that, we might just be able to make society a better place. I had a good idea of what prison would be like. I'd seen Wentworth. I knew to avoid the laundry. <laughs> I expected that I would have to go without my little luxuries, that I'd lose my privacy, that I would lose access to the little things that I had at home. I would have to learn to deal with jail food and go without limited activities. What I didn't expect was to have my anti-anxiety medication taken from me for seven days while paperwork was completed. And that on the fourth day, when I admitted to having thoughts of self-harm, that I would be isolated to a stone cell with nothing but a plastic-covered mattress, a T-shirt, and my underwear. I didn't expect to suffer third world conditions in the watch house as cockroaches scurried over me while I slept. And I certainly didn't expect to be told by a clinic nurse mid panic attack that if I didn't calm down, she would refuse to sign off on my medication. But the thing that was least expected for me was the fact that the women who were my fellow prisoners were highly intelligent, resourceful, resilient, generous, fiercely loyal women. These women had everything that you required to create yourself as a normal life in society, except for one thing, circumstance. I'm well aware of the advantages and privileges that I hold over your average prisoner. I have the privilege of a wonderful upbringing with my parents in a loving family. I had a stable childhood. I have cognitive privilege. I had an education. I was able to problem solve and I was able to advocate for myself. I had the privilege of knowing that when I was released, I would have a roof over my head and I would be financially supported until I was able to do so myself. Unfortunately, this isn't the norm. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, 54% of parolees are released to homelessness. 60% of parolees have diagnosable mental health conditions. And 80% of the women who are released from prison are mothers. The average parolee in New South Wales, where I went to prison, is released with nothing but $50, a 
a travel ticket, their release certificate, and if they're lucky, the items that were on their person when they went to prison. With those items, they're expected to get themselves home, if they still have one, feed and clothe themselves, get any prescribed medication, the list goes on and on. Now imagine you have no home to go to, you don't have a supportive network of family and friends who are there to assist you, you have no photo ID, and you need social services to survive. It's not unusual for someone released from prison to go onto Tinder to find themselves a date so they have somewhere to sleep that night. A person who's released from prison not only loses their material possessions, their home, potentially, family, children, car, job. Most are released from prison without a phone a wallet, without an identity within society. Think about the number of times that you use a photo ID on a daily basis. Without it, in our society, you simply don't exist. People who have been to prison have a bigger identity behind bars than they do in society. But don't forget, these people are smart. They're capable. They suffered more trauma than you and I could ever imagine. Yet society keeps them prisoners after they've done their time. My reintegration, I like to think of it as an iceberg. What you see on the surface doesn't really represent what's going on beneath the water. And you don't actually see the work that's gone into getting me to where I am today. But I can let you know, I completed 18 months of home detention with an ankle bracelet, 12 months of parole, six months of prison, 400 hours of community service. I engaged with two, a counsellor and a psychologist, two employment agencies. I was hired into a role that was um, applicable for my skills. I've, I engaged with a life coach. I've done numerous life improvement courses. I've got my licence back. I've re-engaged with my children. And I've reached out to my victims in an attempt to apologise. Now, given that that's what I needed to do to get to the stage that I am standing here today, what hope does someone without the support network that I had have of doing the same? And why would they want to? Because it goes even further than that. People who are in prison have better access to services than they do in society. I was in prison for six months, and in that time, I was put on a housing priority list. I received tooth repair from the dentist. I was represented by a barrister in court, and I received a psychiatric evaluation. It would take years to receive the same services funded by the government otherwise. But let me play devil's advocate here. 45% of everybody that goes to prison is sentenced to 12 months or less. What if we were to take the $120,000 that it costs to keep an adult in prison for 12 months and use it instead to wrap them up in the services that they require to help turn their lives around and help them reintegrate back into society. How much better would that make them feel about themselves? How would it impact the way that they see themselves in society? And how in turn would it then help society and benefit us? Because the thing is, behind every criminal record is a person just like you. A criminal record doesn't speak of the roles that we hold in society as a parent or a child, as a friend or a TEDx speaker. My criminal record talks about a mistake that I made 
It doesn't talk about the remorse that I feel for my actions, nor does it talk about the money that I've been mandated to repay. You have the power to embrace change. Look past the criminal record and get to know the person. If you're in a position to do so, employ someone with a criminal record. Use your existing skill set to volunteer to help someone or become a mentor. Donate or purchase from worthy causes. I'm sure at some point, all of you have done something that you regret and makes you wish that you could turn back time. Your actions might just help to make all the difference. You may just allow someone to have the same second chance that I did because you have the power to change someone's life. Thank you. <laughs>